So, this is going to be no reaction. Why can't it do an SN1? Because uh, that would form the primary carbocation. So why can't it do an SN2? Well, let's talk that through a little bit. Remember, what was the big obstacle to SN2? Um, steric hindrance. That blocks the nucleophile. I'm going to mention that. The, the reason we want to keep mentioning the nucleophile is that means nucle nucleophile quality matters for SN2. Because if the nucleophile is really good, it's just going to brush aside all that steric hindrance. If you have a very eager nucleophile, it's just going to push aside the steric hindrance. It won't care about it. So that slogan is implying that the nucleophile quality is important okay. um, for an SN2 reaction. That's why we don't just want to say steric hindrance. We want to say steric hindrance that blocks the nucleophile. So if we have a really good nucleophile, the steric hindrance won't matter all that much, maybe, because the nucleophile will just brush on through it. OK. Well, who is going to be the nucleophilic atom here? The neutral oxygen. Neutral oxygen. Now, we can kind of break nucleophiles into three categories, um, good nucleophiles, poor nucleophiles, and not nucleophiles at all. Those are good enough categories. Good, poor, and not nucleophilic at all. Um, now, if you're a good nucleophile, you can do SN1 or SN2. But if you're a poor nucleophile, you can't do SN2, because we just said that SN2 needs a pretty good nucleophile to get through any steric hindrance that might be there. All right. Well, which category would this be in? We basically just have to have memorized that a neutral oxygen is a poor nucleophile. You can actually see that from your table. In fact, I think you had mentioned that previously. If you look at the table on page three, oxygen, neutral oxygen is all by itself in the poor nucleophile category. What does poor nucleophile mean? It means good enough for SN1, but not good enough for SN2. As a practical matter, that means good enough for SN1, but not good enough for SN2. If you look at that column, you can see in that oxygen column, there's some SN1s, but there's no SN2s. OK, it would actually be good to be able to explain why this is a poor nucleophile, but we have a lot to cover today, so I guess we won't get to that. I'll just memorize that this is, uh, this is the one thing. Uh, neutral oxygens are the one thing that can do an SN1, but not an SN2. We'll just memorize that. That's actually pretty important, so that would be good to memorize. Um, now, why does the nucleophile quality not matter for SN1? Well, what was the big obstacle to SN1? Uh, stability of the carbocation. It's just going to basically take anything it can get once it gets to that point, once it has the positive charge on the carbon. That's exactly right. Yeah, that's very well put. Um, so. The big obstacle is stabilizing the carbocation. The carbocation is so unhappy, it'll accept any nucleophile you throw at it, basically, even a poor nucleophile. All right, so there's nothing the nucleophile can do to stabilize the carbocation. But, um, uh, so the nucleophile quality doesn't matter here uh, for SN1. That's pretty much exactly what you said. So what you said was a good way of putting it. All right, so nucleophile quality doesn't matter for SN1 as long as you have something that is a somewhat decent nucleophile like this. Poor is good enough. OK, um, but for SN2, we need a good nucleophile. OK, so that's why um, we can't do an SN1, because this is not substituted enough. It's primary. And we can't do an SN2, because you can never do an SN2 with a neutral oxygen. You can never do an SN2 with a neutral oxygen.